Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's Power Move, we're going to talk about the lead-in for this thread, and we're going to talk about some tips and tricks on how to create this lead-in geometry. And this entire bottle was constructed using a sweep and some other advanced part design techniques, and we're going to learn all about advanced part design a little bit later this month in a training class that I'm holding called Toby's SW Advanced Part Design. So if you're interested in learning about sweeps and lofts and guide curves and all kinds of other cool, fun, advanced part design techniques, be sure to take a look down below in the description. I've got all the details for that upcoming training class. So when it comes to creating threads like this, the lead-in is the main area that I want to focus on for this video, but I do want to just talk for a moment about the thread itself and a little trick that you can use to kind of avoid some troubles when it comes to creating a thread sweep. And that trick has to do with the thread profile itself. So this profile sketch is created at the end point of a helix. And if we look at this profile sketch here and we kind of zoom in on that profile sketch, you'll notice it's something that I always do with my thread profile sketch sketches is I always create a little bit of additional geometry to kind of overlap into the main body that I'm sweeping around. So in this case, that overlap is about 0.1 millimeters additional into the main body that I'm sweeping around. And so where people can sometimes get themselves into trouble is they'll go to create this sweep. They'll maybe take this edge here. This is the edge of the, the neck of that bottle. They'll take this edge here at the edge of that neck and they'll do a convert entities. So now that edge is converted. And then what they'll do is they'll create the geometry for that sweep profile. So in the case of this thread, there was like a little fillet here, uh, kind of went down something like this and then came across sharp like so. And then they'll trim this geometry up. So we'll go trim here, trim, 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 trim that geometry up. The problem with a profile like this is that because this is directly on the edge of this bottle, sometimes you end up with either a zero thickness error or the, the sweep will kind of like pull away just a little bit from the body. And then you end up with these little uh, cavities, these little chasms, uh, these little gaps between the sweep and the main body. So what I will typically do in this scenario is I will just go to that uh, original geometry and I'll take that original geometry and then maybe create a an additional line over here and I'll just put a little distance there between those two. So maybe make this distance 0.1 millimeters and then I'll do a trim command. And when I go to do the trim command, I'll extend this leg here. I'll extend this leg here. So I'm just dragging on the trim command and then I'll just trim this up like so. And I'll finish up by taking this line here and making that line for construction. And that gives me that overlap. And that's a great way to avoid ending up in that situation with that zero thickness or with those little gaps between the sweep. So if I control Z here back to the original profile, there you can see that's exactly what I did. Now, when it comes to the lead in for this thread, a lot of times people will do a similar technique. Maybe I'll begin a sketch on this face and maybe I'll take uh, this edge, this edge, this edge and this edge. Whoops. Take this edge, this edge, uh, this edge and this edge and I'll do a convert entities. So we'll convert that, that geometry down through there and then we'll close that off with maybe a vertical line here. And then we'll use that vertical line as our axis of revolve to get into a revolve command. So we'll go features, we'll create a revolve here and then we'll choose to revolve that face directly onto the main body and that gives us our lead in. You know, maybe we need to adjust this angle here. Let's reverse the direction for that angle. There we go, that looks pretty good. Hit the green check mark and there we go. But there's two issues with this. The first issue is once again, you're going to potentially run into that issue where you have kind of a zero thickness, depending on what's going on with that original edge. Like if this thing is on a cone or if it's on a curved surface, you know, you might not want that edge directly on that intersecting point. You might want it overlapped that 10 thou again. And then the second issue is what if the customer comes back to you and says, this is too abrupt. You know, what if the customer comes back to you and they say, I want this lead in to be more like this. I want it to kind of be a little bit more of a gradual lead in. I don't want it to just all of a sudden become this lead in here. How are you going to address that issue? And so the way that I address that issue typically is for the, the first part of that issue, I just do the same thing that I advised you to do a moment ago, which is to take this original line here and create an additional line a little bit further in. So we'll just create an additional line here a little further in. Let's select that geometry and make those parallel. Let's take this line here and make it for construction. And then let's jump into a trim command and we'll use that trim command to extend here 
to extend here and then to trim off these little tips here. We'll add a smart dimension and we will make that smart dimension a value of 0.1 millimeters. And that way we are overlapping slightly into the material, just like we talked about earlier. The second thing that I'll do is I'll create a center line here, kind of more into the bottle. And then I'll use that center line. Let's make those two parallel. So just like we did a moment ago, do a crossing select, make those parallel. And then I'll use that center line with a dimension here from the original intersecting edge. And let's just make that dimension two millimeters. So two millimeters to that center line. I'm going to exit that sketch. The revolve is going to error. So I'm going to edit that feature and I'm going to make sure that that's revolving about this line here. And so now we can see that we're getting this revolve here and we can see that that revolve is giving us a little bit more of a lead in. But more importantly, if we've got Instant 3D turned on here, so here you can see on my Features toolbar, Instant 3D is turned on, I can click on that Revolve, and then I can click on this parameter, this dimension, and I can change that dimension. So if I'm working with the customer, I could bump that up to three and say, how's that look? Uh, you want a little bit more? Let's bump that up to five. How's that look? Okay, you want a little bit more? Let's bump that up to nine. How's that look? And then the customer says, oh yeah, that looks great. That's exactly what I want from that lead-in. And now the customer's happy, you're happy, you've created this nice lead-in for the thread. The thing engages nice and easily and everyone is happy and that's what we want when we're working with our customers. Now, of course, we've got this little extra material here sticking into the model. So how can we resolve that extra material? Guys, if you've been on the channel for a long time, you know what we're gonna do to resolve this issue. Be sure to hit that like button if you know where we're going with this because that's right, we're we're going to be using our very favorite feature insert face delete it helps us in so many situations and so we're going to pick this face here this face here this face here this face here i think there's a little guy hiding out back here yep this face down here and then finally to get that face underneath we're going to right mouse button select other and then pick that face that's on the bottom we hit the green check mark solidworks has no problem cleaning up that area with our delete face command and that is how you can create thread lead-ins like a pro and if you guys enjoyed that video be sure to hit the like button be sure to leave me a comment down below about what you learned from this video and if you enjoy my style of teaching and you're looking to get some training on sweeps and lofts and guide curves and all kinds of cool advanced part design techniques be sure to sign up for that upcoming training class it's two days we're holding it a little bit later this month and all the details are down below in the description and i hope that everybody learned a lot from this video and I look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.